one of the major things that we work with our students on is trying to give them a swing that has a backup plan built into it in case the timing mechanism can break down or be inaccurate at times. What I mean by that is that we want our students to still have a great deal of success regardless of being late, on time, or early on a pitch. One of the ways that we measure this is simply by tracking the arc of the ball as it comes in towards our hitter. If we notice in this sequence, the green line represents the path that the ball takes on the way to the hitter. For a hitter to have success, the more distance, the greater distance that the bat spins on this green line, the more opportunity our hitter has for contact with full bat speed on the sweet spot of the bat. If we notice if our hitter is drastically late, then she's got a chance to put the ball in play with a lot of bat speed. If she were to make contact here, she would be fine. Sweet spot's directly on the green line. She hits the ball out in front. Sweet spot's still intact. And she keeps the bat on line with the pitch for a long distance. Now, this doesn't mean this isn't a short swing, because we're about to talk about that. This just means our hitter keeps her bat moving on the same angle as the ball for a long distance, which will produce results regardless of the timing. One of the ways that she's able to do this is by establishing a good lead arm and by setting a proper angle. Probably the most difficult habit to overcorrect or to fix when we have students come to us the first time is a big chopping motion down through the ball. If we pull out here and we notice our hitter on the right side, we'll look at a first time student and how her bat is not going to stay on the green line. It's going to intersect the line so that there's only one real opportunity for contact, which would be in this position right here. Since our hitter is a little bit early, the ball has not quite made its way into that one specific zone where we're going to have perfect contact. So our hitter in this case isn't going to have perfect results unless they time the ball perfectly which is almost impossible to do in softball where the ball can change directions, change speeds, change spins. There's too many variables going on to, to just have a swing that allows you to hit the ball perfectly in one small segment of time. So let's talk about exactly why this happens with batters and what the pros do that allow them to get the bat on that angle sooner and keep it there. We're going to stop our hitters in virtually the same position. If we look at both hitters, they do have things in common. If we look at the knob of the bat, which a lot of kids will hear, take the knob of the bat to the ball. The only thing wrong with this is that as we're going to the ball, that is correct. If we notice on our hitter on the left, the knob is going down towards the green line. Same thing on the right. The knob is going down towards the green line. The biggest difference is that when our hitter on the left, as her hands pass her hips and the center of her body, notice the knob of the bat begins to work up, which will allow the bat head to drop onto the green line in the next frame. As the knob continues to work up. So it's prior to contact as the hands pass the body, as they work in front of the body at our bat lag phase of the swing, as the knob begins to work up above the ball, this will drop the barrel on the same line of the incoming pitch. If we do not turn the, the knob of the bat up, the barrel will not allow itself to get onto the line of the pitch. If 